The second section of this course is Debugging Spring Boot 2 with Logs. The first video of this section is Introducing Log4j, a logging framework. Log4j is a very popular logging framework. It is an open source Apache project and comes now in the version 2. This version 2 is an upgrade to Log4j that provides significant improvements over its predecessor and it provides many of the improvements available in Logback while fixing some inherent problems in Logback's architecture. The API for Log4j is separate from the implementation, making it clear for application developers which classes and methods they can use while ensuring forward compatibility. The performance has improved because Log4j2 contains next-generation asynchronous loggers based on the LMAX Disruptor library. It supports multiple APIs like Log4j1.2, SLF4j, Commons Logging and Java Util Logging APIs. It avoids login because the applications coded to the Log4j2 API always have the option to use any SLF4J compliant library as their logger implementation with the Log4J to SLF4J adapter. Log4J2 can automatically reload its configuration upon modification and it supports filtering based on context data, markers, regular expressions and other components in the log event. Log4j2 uses the plugin pattern to configure components. As such, you do not need to write code to create and configure an appender, layout, pattern converter and so on. You can reference properties in a configuration. Log4j will directly replace them. Client code running on Java 8 can benefit from Log4j's Lambda support. You can define custom log levels. Log4j2 is garbage free in standalone applications and has low garbage in web applications. And you can integrate it in application servers like Tomcat and Jetty. The integration of Log4j2 is indeed tricky. If you configure Spring Boot with the Spring Boot Starter web, it comes with a dependency of Spring Boot Starter logging and this depends on the Logback framework and SLF4J. Before you add the Log4J2 dependency to your project, you have to exclude the Spring Boot Starter logging before the Log4J dependency and after the Spring Boot Starter web dependency in your Maven POM file. If you use Gradle, you have to exclude it the same way. The configuration of Log4J is easy. You can define either a Log4J2 XML or better, log4j2 spring xml file or you can define the configuration as a json file or even as a yaml file. This is the basic structure of a log4j configuration file. First we define properties like path variables where the log files are stored or a log pattern. We can define filters then we define the appenders. Appenders can be console appenders or file appenders. Rolling file appenders define a pattern and a size. When a certain file size is reached, it creates a new file. We define the loggers with name and to what appender it is logged. Now let's take a look at a log4j sample. I have created a new Spring Boot project with a simple Hello World web file. Here in the POM file you see how I have added the Spring Boot starter log4j2 dependency and I have excluded the formerly Spring Boot logging before. This is my log4j2 Spring XML file. It is located in the resources directory. You can see here that I have defined two properties. The log pattern defines how the message is outputted on the console or in the file. The property name app log root defines the path to the log files. This is the part where I have defined the appenders. The console appender has got a name to be identified with the pattern layout we have defined in our properties. 
The rolling file appender has also got a name, with a file name, a file pattern, and it follows the predefined pattern layout. When the file size has reached about 2 megabytes, a new file is created. The logouts are now defined. Our application is applied to our file appender and the console appender, and the root appender outputs the info message to the console. In my controller class, we define a logger here and we do some output to the different levels. So now let's run our application. You see here the console output with our logging info. And here you see that a new directory logs has been created with our application log.